When you think of the 1970s, iconic images come to mind. Bell bottoms and platform shoes, disco and Donna Summer, amazing afros and massive mustaches. Not to mention that man-made material that took over the entire decade, polyester. But what was it like in Brooklyn specifically? <laughs> Well, here to share their experience of that time of a half century ago, our author and photographer, Meryl Meisler, who brings back that period in her book, Purgatory in Paradise, Sassy 70s Suburbia and the Cité. Welcome to BK Live. Welcome back, I should say. And former Brooklyn Borough historian, Ron Schweiger. Welcome to BK Live, sir. Thank you. Thank you both so much you. for he being was in here. your basement. Yes, that's a great video. Thank you, Ron, for having us in your house. And thank you both very much for being here to talk about the 70s. Let's start with some personal background on both of you. Why don't you tell us at what point in your life you were at during the 1970s? Ron, can we start with you? Well, um, 1970, in fact, I graduated from Brooklyn College uh, and I became a teacher. And um, I was teaching for 39 years. Wow. And even though I'm a historian, I was a science teacher for 39 years. Um, th 31 years at uh, PS 219 in East Flatbush. And then I retired from the Board of Ed in 01 because I got Board of Ed, pun intended. <laughs> and from 01 to 09, I taught science at the Yeshiva of Flatbush. So we have two teachers at the table. Mayor, I remember Amazing. the first time you were here, yeah. you were a teacher moonlighting as a photographer girl about town as well. And dancing the night away, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so I moved to New York City in 1975, but I grew up in Long Island. And I started uh, hitting the clubs and hitting the discos when they really went wild. The dis seven immediately. Yeah. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> immediately. Excellent. And, and I. Taught, I as well taught for 31 years in the New York City public school system, 14 of them in Bushwick, when it was Bush. known to be hot for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, just before we move on, I'm sort of struck by the fact that both of you were teachers. Was there a lot of moonlighting sort of thing when you guys were in the teacher's lounge? Did people have outside lives, or was it mainly they taught and maybe some of the younger ones danced the night away and then you were there for first period? <laughs> would you like to go first? Uh-oh, I feel like something's <laughs> well, gonna be divulged. Well, okay. well, I would say that upon retirement, yeah. I started releasing these large bodies of work that might not have been mm. appropriate as a, yeah. a full employed that pedagogue. Miss oh, yeah. So when my former <clears throat> students come to my shows, they're like, Miss Meisler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what I did um, to earn some extra money, yeah. um, in the summer, I worked at a, a, a Brooklyn day camp, um, the Neighborhood Playhouse for Children on East 8th Street between Avenues R and S. In fact, I lived right around the corner mm -hmm. before I got married, and I was very familiar with the place. And I took care of a group, a, a boys' group, and uh, then uh, a year or two later, I might say I graduated to the older school, the Mill, the Mill, ba the Mill Harbor School, which is in the Mill Basin neighborhood. And that was for the older kids. Yeah. And there I had a, not only was in charge of a group of boys, but I also uh, drove one of the camp buses, driving the kids home at the end of the day. And when I was still teaching, at the end of the day, at 3 o'clock, I would rush over to the Mill Harbor School and get on the bus and drive the kids home to earn some, some money. Wow. Yeah. Well, so speaking <laughs> of when Bushwick was hot, Meryl, this was one of the times we're looking at one of your photos right now of the last wall. What are we looking at, Meryl? We're actually looking at progress here. This is our, the school I taught in. After, after East New York, I went to Bushwick, and East New York was in better shape. Yeah. And Bushwick, when I, we looked out, the, looked out the window, it just looked like the aftermath of a, a war zone and blocks and blocks of dead buildings. Yeah. And then at one point, they started taking down those buildings. And, and you can see that the high rise behind it is something called New Hope. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, Hope Gardens, oh, God. which is a, the first of a series of buildings that went up, which was actually the last public housing project in this country. And it was very, so in, in, in place of blocks and blots of burnt out buildings, this new community went up, which has been very successful, very, you know, mm -hmm. really maintained, built to scale. Yeah. 
But when when 9/11 happened and we saw that picture of the of the firemen with the mm -hmm. last building, I, in my brain I said, I've taken that photograph before. Wow. I knew I saw the same thing, yeah. but it was really progress going on. So, Ron, speaking of that, like, cultural moment, when people think of the 70s, they want to go to the disco era and the platform shoes and afros, but what was the cultural time like? We saw, like, there was a lot of blight in Brooklyn in the 70s. What was the real life like outside of the flashy movie stuff? Um, well, during the 60s, there was a recession, mm -hmm. um, and the 70s was, you might say, slowly trying to come out of that recession. Um, there was a lot of crime. Um, in certain neighborhoods, the banks were redlining, couldn't, very difficult to get a mortgage. Right. Um, in, in, like, for example, in, in Flappish, where the big Victorian beautiful homes are, um, you could buy a home in the 70s there for, let's say, $50,000. What? Today, they're all, well over a million dollars. So, but was $50,000 then the million of today? Did, was it like, well, to um, scale, like how much would that have Kind been? of. Yeah. But it wasn't easy getting a mortgage mm -hmm. because of the fact that there was crime in many of the areas, not, not just in Brooklyn, but throughout the city. Yeah. And, um, and it, 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 there was tough times. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, I was earning extra money working in a, in a day camp after school and during the summer. Yeah. Um, you know, driving the kids home on the bus. And uh, you needed extra money. Yeah. And uh, for some people it was easier, for some people it wasn't. Yeah. And it was a tough time. And for entertainment, besides going to the, uh, the disco clubs and everything, yeah. people would go to the movies. But during the 70s, it was a tough time because the movie theaters started closing up. You could walk two, three, or four blocks in any direction from your house and come to movie theaters. Yeah. And these were neighborhood theaters. For example, on Flappish Avenue, you could walk from Cortelio Road north to Church Avenue. That's Church. like five blocks. Yeah. There were five or six theaters just along that strip. Yeah. They're all gone. What except, are some the except Kings, right? The Kings closed in 1977. Right. The Lowe's King. Theater. It's really Lowe's, but in Brooklyn we call it Lowe's. And it was closed for 38 years. Yeah. It, last year, they completed a $93 million restoration. Diana Ross. Restoring it to its original 1929, gorgeous architect, beautiful inside. I was there for, for the opening night for, with Diana Ross. It, it, was, it was spectacular. What are some of the craziest moments you remember from the 1970s? I mean, specifically, we were talking about the blackout. Was the Summer of Sam something you remember yes. specifically? Meryl, can you speak about all of that? I, the summer, yes, 77, here I was, like, freelancing as an illustrator, going out to discos at night, Teaching going out, yeah, yeah, hello, and then <laughs> going to, you know, you'll see a picture of Coney, Coney Island coming up. Um, I mean, I... Well, I guess let's talk about 77, the blackout. That was the night I was this is the literally yeah. going to go to Studio 54 yeah. and we invited my friend and I were invited by one of the owners to go to a private party within there, meaning going into a private sanctum, uh, like, hoo, hoo. Yeah. <laughs> go away, get all dolled up, go to go out, and like, Son of a no lights, oh, no. go to the sub no subway. That could no have been buses. a changing moment in your life. Uh, it was. Got on. Are you kidding? That wasn't stopping us. We got on oh, so bicycles <laughs> and drove down, rode down, you know, drove down. In a dress. And yes. We bike heels, to dress, the studio ready to go. Before. Back, you know, camera on back, and you know, I see just headlights coming. Go to studio before, and the doors are closed, banging on the doors, yeah. and like, no answer. There's a photo it's you like, took of Studio 54. Yeah, that's yeah? right. Just being. Re one of, one of the nights we were rejected, very few of those. But, um, and, and the next day is when I and the world heard of this place called Bushwick, mm. which really you didn't you know, sound like a place I'd really ever want to hang out because yeah. it was, you know, got made this name for arson and fires and looting and yeah. really bad things happening during the, the blackout. And who knew just a few years sound. later I would end up teaching there and it would change my life. Wow. So this but, looks like Grace Jones. But yeah, here is, said, I went to a lot of different. Here is uh, Grace Jones coping, coming to the opening night of La Farfalle. La there was so many. Good thing I wrote the names of the yeah, clubs. Well, I actually did go to that first that disco that was filmed 
in John Travolta's um, Saturday Night With the Live. the lighted floor. I did go to there, but I, why didn't I carry my camera then? I don't know, uh, but I was there. <laughs> now, Ron, I know I had you... to check it out, you know. <laughs> come on. Purses and were too small. So, but the, so the, the disco scene was hot, hot, hot. You know, like a week later after after the blackout, you know, we would just go out and dancing once again. Yeah. Oh, but would, New York was changed and I was changed. I was going to say, Ron, I'm sure you did a lot of disco dancing with Grace Jones and the like. You strike me as somebody that did Not as well. in the least. <laughs> what were some of your favorite standout craziest moments of the 1970s here in Brooklyn? I see sassy. I can't, can honestly say I don't recall doing any crazy things. Um, <laughs> what was in the news? Well, it was mentioned, Son of Sam. Uh, 1977, 78, mm -hmm. and it was because of parking tickets that he was actually uh, caught. And the police detective, Eddie Zigo, is the one who uh, figured it out because um, son of Sam, um, uh, David Berkowitz mm -hmm. is his name, um, he had a parking ticket in one location and then a parking ticket in another location. It turns out both those locations have where, been hit. where the girls were, were shot and killed. Yeah. Right. And they, they put two and two together and they I checked out the license plate and found out where he lived. Surrounded his house. Didn't he say, what took you so long when the cops showed up? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Well, that was something that was famously made into a movie, but Brooklyn in the 70s became something of a hub for TV and film there production. There was a CBS movie of the week yeah. um, that I got involved with because the location director came down my block on Rugby Road <laughs> looking for a site location, a house to use. For Dog Day Afternoon? No, no, no. That's for for the capture of Son of Sam. Oh. oh. Capture of Son of Sam. And Martin Sheen played the role of Eddie Zigo, and Martin Sheen's trailer was in front of my house on Get Rugby out Road. Of town. And our friend across the street, uh, um, uh, Sandy and Hazel, their house was used for Eddie Zigo's house in the film. Oh, wow. Yes. Nice. Well, speaking of, you know, TV and movies in Brooklyn, we have Dog Day Afternoon here, which was you know, based on a true story that took place, I believe, in Gravesend, but, however, was shot in what is now kind of Park Slope. Well, um, go ahead. Well, part of it was shot on Avenue P near McDonald Avenue, which really isn't Park Slope. It's um, right on the northern edge of the Gravesend area. Certainly, yeah. 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 And um, other movies like the... French Connection, Serpico, was that a big news story at the time? The police officer Serpico? I don't know. I'm not sure of the year of that. <laughs> okay. But and The Warriors was another one. The Warriors was um, a classic cult film made mm -hmm. 1979. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's about gang, gang, you know, gangs in, in Brooklyn. How close uh, to real life was that? I presume some of those would have been students of yours oh. in the building, like gangs in the 70s. No one would wear red on Halloween because, it, you know, it meant the Crips versus the Bloods. Uh, there, there were definitely gangs. Even gang, you know, on a, when I even I lived on the Upper West Side, there were gangs. Yes, the Savage Nomads, <laughs> the Crips, the Bloods, you know, different gangs everywhere. And Son of Sam Summer, I remember it very well because in the book is a picture of Coney Island. And mm -hmm. here I was, a short, brown-haired woman, wow. going with a friend and a, a male friend of ours, and we parked, drove out to Coney Island. And I'm sitting in the car, and I'm thinking, we're out of our minds, because I fit the profile. Were women buying blonde uh, wigs in order to not fit yeah, the profile? Uh, yes, you know, a lot of people being um, stuffed wow. while sitting in cars with yeah. young women and, and men together. And I thought, oh my God, we're out of our minds. But we still, we went on the you know, went on the roller coaster, and I, there's a picture, and then you realize there's only men in the picture because. Who else would be out there? Oh my gosh. But it was well, definitely a big relief when Son of Sam was wow. not on the street anymore. Well, we only have a few seconds left, so let's show these books. And Ron, why don't we give you the last word? What was your overall takeaway from the, this time, the 1970s here in Brooklyn? Um, well, for, for me, it was um, graduating from Brooklyn College in 1970, getting my master's there in 75 at Brooklyn College and teaching, teaching young kids um, um, science, which is a hobby of mine, uh, meteorology, uh, uh, um, the planets, uh, plants, uh, um, animals, you know, teaching the children. Um, this was my life in the 70s. And uh, my older son, 
uh, was born in 1975, and that was uh, a big thing, in a, you know, for, for my wife and me, of course. Um, now he, he's 41 now, <laughs> and um, yeah. and uh, and I think Merrill mentioned Coney Island. Coney Island uh, was going downhill. I mean, uh, the last of the big um, amusement parks, Steeplechase Park, mm -hmm. closed after the 1964 season. Dreamland closed after 1911. It burned down in 1911. Luna Park closed in 1946, and Steeplechase closed after 19, six, after the 64 season. And Coney Island was dying. Wow. So, Merrill, just looking at all these images, they're so evocative. In closing, I'm going to ask you if you could bring back anything from the 70s as it was then that lives in your memory or your photographs, what would you bring back? I would bring back a sense of innocence. Mm. I, I do feel there was I've a sense of it. Pictures yeah, of yeah, it well, what can I say? We all have our take of innocence. But maybe it was my innocence as mm. well. It's just coming to a, coming from growing up in the burbs and coming to a city full of people from all over the world, all walks of life, mm -hmm. accepting one another for being Whatever a little are. off the, the beaten normal path. Yeah. And a real sense of excitement and that you could do anything. And yes, and why? You weren't loaded? I was just loaded in my $10,000 a year salary, okay? <laughs> That's right. That's what yeah, we're No, doing. I've always worked, but a real sense of can do because yeah. the only way was up. Yeah. Ron? Something, something started in 1977. With inflation now. That is continuing starting next week on December 16th. One sentence. Star Wars, 1977. <laughs> wow. Some things never change. You know, if you want this bigger picture of Brooklyn in the 1970s, these are the two experts to talk to you. Thank you very much for being here. And these thank books are so just much. fantastic. Thank Sassy you. 70s, Suburbia and the City. Merrill, thank you very much. Ron, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Please come back soon, okay?